So uh, I thought what I would do in this video is tackle the question of whether you should accept coding challenges uh, as part of the interview process for a potential job. Uh, so I have some notes up on my screen, so you might see me look away from there, but um, it, it, there was a lot to digest and I don't I don't want to um, neglect anything. So I felt that the notes were necessary. So uh, I apologize if, I'm, if I look a bit distracted at times. Um, so I think in short, the answer to whether you should accept coding challenges or not, in my personal opinion, is no. Unequivocally, no. Uh, just no. There have been some posts lately um, on Reddit and on um, Y Combinator about the trend to do coding challenges as part of the technical interview process. And the one thing that can't be said about it is that it's not polarizing. It is polarizing. But I feel like there's, there's a particular view that I have that isn't really being addressed in the whole conversation. And so I'm hoping that um, that we can kind of work through that together and, and I can try and, and expound on it a bit more. So first of all, as an employer, from, from, the, from the perspective of an employer, uh, I've been in those shoes. I've been, I've been someone who, who is an employer who, need, who has, has to go out and hire other developers. And of course, I've also worked with other developers. And I've had the privilege of, of working with some awesome, amazing developers and then developers who are less than stellar. So I know what it's like when you get a developer who is inexperienced and somehow they've duped you into thinking that they have a lot of experience and they don't. Or someone who, who maybe has the experience but ultimately doesn't care about their job. It's a paycheck. They clock in, clock out. I've worked with both. both. And God forbid that you work with someone who is both in one person. That's really bad. What happens when you get a person like that? Well, I think it's rather clear. Uh, I don't think we need to to expand on on what happens when you have people working for you who are like that. And that goes into, I mean, that goes beyond the tech field. That goes into any field. The number of hours that you lose because of someone like that, the amount of damage that they cause to the work that they produce, to the colleagues around them, Sometimes it's innumerable. You're, you're not able to count that cost. And I'm not saying that every developer needs to be some kind of super evangelist developer who codes every single waking moment of their life and they're a developer through and through, that kind of a thing. You don't need to be that way. A lot of people do jobs that don't define them or they're not necessarily super passionate about. But show some care, you know, about your job. Like, care enough to do the best job that you can do during the hours in which you are paid to do that job. Like that, that's really what it boils down to. So where did that go? Where did that sense of ethical workmanship go? It, anyways, that's, that's a different thing. The point is, as an employer, if you're, if you're not careful, you get somebody who, who does not fit in. And that has, there's a price to pay for that. So you're losing money for one thing. Another thing is it can be demoralizing. Uh, and then, of course, the biggest price that a company can, can pay for even one person's failure is that they don't exist anymore. Like, that's the ultimate price for a company. They die. So it's important for the company, for the employer, company or not, for any employer, it's important that they have people who are not going to cause them to fail. So you try and mitigate that risk, right? And 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 it it only takes one person, just like it takes one person to make incredible positive changes, it takes one person to make some really negative bad changes. So so I'm not shocked that employers are asking developers to complete a quiz or a challenge in order to prove that they're worth something, that that they're worth the time to be considered. I get that. However, let's take like, uh, there's one argument against it, which I think kind of touches a little bit on, on the main point, but not really. So uh, if you read 
what other developers are saying on you know Reddit or the Y Combinator post, there's a lot that you can discern about arguments against doing those kinds of things. One of the things that I've personally experienced is like I'm a dad, uh, fresh dad. My child's a few months old. I don't have a lot of time. So, well, here, let's do some math. So imagine yourself in a job where you're about to leave that, that job for whatever reason. Maybe you're going to get fired or the company is going to go away or whatever. You're leaving, right? So it's time to go and look for work. And so you decide that you need to play the numbers game. The more places you apply to, the better your chances are of getting a job. And you're not one of those people who likes to robo-market. Like, you know that you have to do this with quality, with a sense of quality. So you don't just blast out, you know, these whatever non-personal emails, not reading the descriptions of the job postings, for example. Like, you take time, you take care in applying for the jobs, but you want to hit as many job applications as you reasonably can so that you have a higher chance of actually getting a job. Okay, so that's a great start. So then what happens? So you get some interest, one person uh, shows interest in you and they ask you to do a test and you've got two days to do the test and the test takes about two hours. So that's great. And you're pumped, like there's interest, you're pumped, you're, you want to do this. So you finish it that night, you, you, you submit the test and now you have to wait for your review. And then the next day, two people show interest. And, you know, maybe one of them wants you to do another test. And so you have three days to complete the test. And then the test is supposed to take somewhere between two and five hours. And so again, you do it. And then the day after that, two more people show interest. And now you, they want you to do two tests, except one of those tests you have to do right away. And it's two hours. And another one of those tests is five hours, but you have three days to finish it. So, you know, what does that look like at the end of your week, for example? Like, what does that look like at the end of your month? And, and, th and that's not to account for, you know, on day three, you're getting these tests, one of which you have to do right away. And the person who called you first to submit your first test is now calling you for an interview. And so you have to do the interview on top of a, a test. And this is all while you're managing your, your regular job. Uh, you know, like it's a, it's going to be a, it ends up being a crazy day for you because you have to try and be productive at your job. Maybe you can manage that. Maybe you can't. And you have to do all these tests and then you have to do the interviews. And so what is it, what does it end up looking like between all the things that you have to do spending time on this? How much time are you spending a month doing tests? Let's just take tests. So let's say you did three tests a week and each test took two hours, and you did that for a month. Uh, so that's looking like, so four weeks in a month, and each week had six hours worth of tests, and so you've got 24 hours of tests that you've done. So you've given up, in a month, you've given up three full business days of work, free. Let's say that, that on average you make like, I don't know, $3,000 a month in whatever currency you make that in. And so 20 approximate working days in a month. And so, so okay, so 150 ish dollars a day is what you make. Okay. So you've given away like $450 of your time for free to do these tests. That's not including your interviews. That's not including like... <sighs> You know, sometimes you get asked to, like, present your solution to people. Like, you're some some kind of puppet in a show, you know? Like, come show us what your solution was all about and let's talk about it. Add up all this time, in a month even. <laughs> I mean, the last time I checked, cap the way capitalism works is I give you money and you give me something of value in, re in return. You know, if a company asks me... Or, or rather, if a company gives me $450, you better be damn sure that they expect something back from me. So what am I expecting back from a company if I give them $450, you know, or companies? Is there a guaranteed job at the end of all this dog and pony show? No. 
if anything, from what I've experienced, sometimes what happens is you'll you'll do your your test, you'll submit it, then somebody better will come along and they'll f- disqualify you based on some arbitrary thing on your test you didn't even know you were being tested for. And then it helps the company feel all warm and fuzzy and sleep all at night because they, I don't know, they, they didn't waste your time, they feel, because they just you took a test voluntarily and you were disqualified for the test. So, you know, we didn't actually waste your time. We just disqualified you based on a certain set of criteria. Like, come on. Really? It, if... If you don't have that kind of that kind of time, especially if you're a really good developer and you know life, and you don't have time to take two hours out of your day, which isn't just two hours out of your day, it's two hours for every person who asks two hours of you. That means that the company is missing out on potentially great developers who just won't bother to do your stupid test. And then the company can sit there and complain about a shortage of good talent and how they can't hire anybody. Like the whole thing is just ridiculous. But, you know, that's just one side of the argument from a, devel- from a developer's pers- perspective, speaking from experience. However, having said that, I believe that the whole discussion is focused on the wrong things. So... <sighs> There's, by by implementing coding challenges, employers are trying to answer a question. They're trying to solve a problem, essentially. And developers are answering that problem by accepting the challenges. But I think the, the problem, the question being posed as the problem, is the wrong question. So, um... Okay, so as a company, what you're trying to do is avoid hiring people who are perhaps deceitful in their experience, or maybe they don't care about their job, or, you know, maybe they think they, they, whatever, they have a big ego, like, you know, take your pick of reasons why a company wants to filter out people by instituting coding challenges. Okay. Except, like, enumerating those problems is important. So as an employer, like how can I ensure that I get the best quality developer that fits with my company and has the skills we want and isn't like a deadbeat in terms of work ethic, for example, right? Hasn't lied about their experience, um, actually knows what they say they know, right? Like that's actually important. It's I don't think the question is, how do we hire people like that? I think the question is, how did we get to a point where companies felt it a requirement to filter out people like that? Like, how did we reach there? How do we make sure that as many developers as possible actually get the training and qualifications that they need to be productive in any company, anywhere, ever? Like, that's the real question. We've... We've somehow in in the industry got to a point where it's acceptable to take to ask for and take coding challenges because things have become so disillusioned, you know, by employers that they feel that it's necessary. Like, how did we get to that point? Instead of focusing on, oh well, you know, our coding challenges good good or not it's like no how about we ask why were they introduced in the first place what led us here so just the whole the whole idea of of being asked to do a dog and pony show for every employer that you want to have the opportunity to be considered for an opportunity for that's crazy why don't we go and tackle the, 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 the entire ecosystem itself and figure out what's wrong instead of like applying more rules and just pissing off good developers who have played the game fairly and care deeply about their craft and they're just so angry that they don't even want to play the game anymore. Like, how does that solve anything? It doesn't. So stop accepting technical tests. Stop asking for them. 
developers are responsible for a lot of this. They need to take responsibility. All of us do. We need to take responsibility for our inadequacies. And, you know, one good way for an employer to make sure that that their employees are, say, uh, induced to good work, you can fire them. You can let them go. You can keep them back from a promotion or a raise or, you know, like... There are tools available other than stopping them before they even get through the gate and telling them to turn around and go back. And and developers need to step up to the plate more and, and, and people need to, I don't know, like, how do you solve that? But, you know, treat your developers with respect. Invest in them. They're human beings. They're not code churning machines that have a whole complex array of you know, computing knowledge that no average person can reasonably maintain. Treat them as such, right? And and invest in them as such. You will, you will be rewarded for that. How we solve the underlying problems that that underpin the whole thing, I'm not sure. Uh, I I think at minimum better training for developers and for companies, so that at least companies are better informed or informed enough to make better decisions about their hiring and, and, and how they manage their developers. Training for developers, I mean, boot camps tried to, to help, but I don't think that's the answer at all. I don't think boot camps have helped. Um, I don't think formal training helps in, in any respect that way. There's got to be something else. And, I, you know, maybe that's something else for a different video or, or whatever. But in any case, I think it boils down to coding challenges I wholeheartedly disagree with. I don't think they should be asked for I don't think they should be taken and you have we as the developers have the option not to take coding challenges we can refuse them and we should and furthermore what's more we're looking at the wrong things we're asking the wrong questions we're trying to solve the the symptoms not the problem not the cause so we need to give that some more thought Anyways, those are my thoughts on technical quizzes, and um, I hope it's I hope this video has been informative in some way, um, and I'll see you again soon.